Welcome back to Stoffer Garage, guys. Today's detail is of a disaster Jeep Wrangler that not only is completely trashed and mudded on the outside of it, which you guys can see from those before shots, but the inside is a disaster as well. So we have a double feature for today's video. We're gonna be doing the exterior first, followed by the interior, and making this Jeep look like brand new again. If you guys like these sort of videos, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so to get started, um, let's get the car out of the garage, get into the driveway because we're gonna tackle the exterior first. And to be honest, I've never worked on a car this muddy before and let alone a Jeep. So I'm actually really excited to get this thing torn apart, get it completely clean. And I know you guys will be excited to see the very end of the video and the transformation because honestly, this thing turned out insane. Now, because there is so much mud on the outside of the car, the pressure washing process in the first part of the detail is going to be getting all of the mud off the car. And because this mud has been completely dried on the car exterior, it's gonna take quite a while, but with a pressure washer and a little bit of time, I'm definitely gonna be able to get it all removed. Now, I can't imagine a lot of you guys having cars this dirty, but when it comes to cleaning a car like this, you have to make sure you get into every possible groove, every possible nook and cranny, because mud is gonna get caked in there, and then after you come back around to that side of the car, you're gonna find like the streaks of mud coming down if you don't get it all. So that is why I'm being extra thorough, and I honestly pressure wash the car twice before I even went to the foam can and everything else, which you guys will see later on, because as you can see here, there is a ton of mud that is caked in everywhere from all these shots, especially underneath the car. So getting it all off is crucial. One thing that I wish I had for this detail in particular is one of those undercarriage sprayers that you can attach to your pressure washer. It's essentially a wheeled cart that goes underneath and sprays upward so you can wash the underbody. That is one thing that is now officially on my Amazon wish list. With this car being as dirty as it is, it's very fitting for the new t-shirt that I just launched, guys. It's actually, you'll see it below when you watch this video, but it says, I like it dirty. And to be honest, it's very fitting for this channel and I thought it was rather funny and humorous. So if you guys wanna pick one up, all of the proceeds are definitely gonna be going to supporting this channel and to the next project, which I'm excited about. It's in the works. It's gonna take a little while to happen, but I promise you it'll be worth it for you guys to make sure you're subscribed to stick around. And if you guys wanna pick up one of the shirts, it helps support this channel. Now this shot in particular shows you how much mud comes off the car and it literally splattered everywhere. All of my cameras had mud splatter all over them. I literally had to clean the lenses probably every like two or three minutes just because of the amount of splatter going everywhere from all this mud.
So now with all the mud rinsed off the car, it is now time to start the washing process, which for this detail in particular, I'm definitely utilizing the foam cannon to cover the car in as much foam as I possibly can to let it try to drip off any dirt that's left on the surface that the pressure washer didn't take off the first time. And some will debate whether or not it's an effective process or not, but regardless, it's fun to do. The soap that I use smells really good and it's just kind of fun to cover the car in this kind of white snow foam. And what I'll do is I'll wait five to 10 minutes for the foam to drip off the car before I rinse it off with a pressure washer. And then the next thing I like to do is to tackle the wheels. And for the wheels, I have a whole separate bucket with all of my wheel tools in particular. So that way I can keep them separate of all the different tools that I use on the paint. Now for the washing of the car, I'm just using the two bucket method, which I've talked about before, but each bucket has a grit guard at the bottom. One has the soapy water, one has clean water. And what you're essentially trying to do is take dirty mitt, dunk it in your fresh water to rinse it off before you put it into your clean soapy water to touch another panel. So that's the two bucket method. It might seem a little complicated at first, but if you try it out, it kind of makes total sense of why you're doing it. So that way you're not bringing new dirt onto a different panel. Now for the drying process, I'm actually using the Turtle Wax Hybrid Ceramic Spray that they have, and this is supposed to be applied when the car is wet, and it helps with the drying process and protects the paint at the same time. For this car, I didn't clay bar and I didn't do any paint correction because the owner is gonna be going off-road again, so he didn't really care if the paint was absolutely perfect because at the end of the day, it was gonna get scratched up again by going into the mud and everything else. But by having an extra coating of the ceramic spray on top of the car, it does help with getting that off in the next wash. The best part about these towels is because they are so large and so heavy when you drape them across different panels, I can typically get an entire car dry just with the single towel, which honestly, once I carry those on Fox Clean, I'll let you guys know when they're in stock because they work incredibly well to get your car dry. And before I get into the interior, I'm just gonna go ahead and coat the outside of the tires now, so that way I don't forget, but also it gives it time to dry so it doesn't fling up on the car when it gets driven after the detail's complete. So per Stoffer Garage fashion, if you guys have been subscribed, you know what is gonna happen next. I always remove the seats from any car that I detail because not only does it gives you better access to cleaning the car in general, but you will find tons of goodies and treasures underneath. And in this car in particular, I definitely needed to get them out because you guys will see what is underneath these seats and how filthy it truly is. I'm also gonna be pulling the center console, the shifter and everything to get it out of the way because of the amount of dirt underneath, but also it just makes it that much easier to clean everything. And for this one in particular, I'm gonna be pulling the carpets from the entire car to get those pressure wash and cleaned outside of the vehicle. And when you guys see these shots of the dirt, it truly makes sense on why I removed everything from the vehicle because I would have never been able to get to it if I didn't do this. Now I want you guys to comment below, how much change do you think I found in this car? Because I made sure I collected it all, put it to the side, and I want you guys to comment below, how much change did you think I found?
One tip that I try to mention is to fold up the floor mats and take them out of the car with all the dirt. But typically what I try to do is just do a simple vacuuming on them and it's no different than these carpets in this car because if I move them out of the way and I pull all of them out and I spill dirt on the floor, which I'm gonna be cleaning anyways, it just makes it easier to get it out of the way while it's in the car before removing it and then it makes it one less step that you have to do when you go to the extraction process. and I will be cleaning also the floor pans of the car itself, just because it's one extra added touch, but it also makes sure that there's no rust spots or rust holes that I need to let the owner know about. Now for the carpets, I'm using two new products, which I'll list in the description box below for you guys. But to start off, I'm spraying everything down with my pre-treatment and I'm gonna let that soak in and I'm gonna be using the drill brush to agitate the fibers, get any of the dirt and get that liquid completely saturated inside the carpet itself. Now one thing I noticed is that I wasn't able to get everything out of the carpet fibers with the one pass and you'll see that there was actually some staining on this carpet and I tried to use several different products that are especially for using rust, getting out dye, getting out different sorts of products that might be on the carpet itself and nothing seemed to work. So for this particular carpet, my recommendation to the owner would to be replace it if you want it to look like new and for a Jeep in particular, it's really not expensive to do but trying these different products, seeing if I can get it out this is what I came, this is the end result. And to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed that I wasn't able to get any of these stains out of the carpet fibers, but it might've just been set for too long. Even after pressure washing the floor mat and doing just one extraction, the mud and dirty water that poured out of the extractor honestly was kind of baffling that there was still that much dirt left in it after doing several pressure washer passes.
Now on this rear carpet, I actually did pre-treatments between pressure washing, and this was all before I took it inside to do the extraction process, and still these stains were showing up, which makes me think that they had completely set into the carpet itself for a long period of time, and I believe that they're rust, but no matter what I tried to do, I wasn't able to get them out, but majority of the carpet was cleaner, and if you looked at it before and after, it was still an improvement, so letting the owner know that this was the best that it would turn out to be, they can then look at maybe purchasing some new carpets since it truly is pretty easy to get them in and out of the Jeep. Now for the seats, I always try to do a vacuuming first and you'll actually see the vacuum lines on the seat of the dust that's just removed off the surface from just doing that process before you then spray them down with the pretreatment and then agitate them with the drill brush. Now one tip for you guys, if you're doing any extraction, always try to move your head back and forth on the extractor multiple times in an area, because not only do you help move the fibers in different directions, but you saturate in two different directions before you extract. This helps really remove a lot more dirt than you would actually realize. You guys might notice that my garage looks a little bit untidy and this is honestly because I'm in the process of designing and figuring out how I want to completely organize this garage what kind of shelving I want to put up, what kind of cabinets I want to put up in the back. But if you guys have any suggestions of cabinets that maybe you have in your garage or you've seen online, let me know in the comments below. I'm trying to figure out how I want to design this and I have an image in my head, but I'm trying to also optimize it for detailing and how I want to position everything. One question I get a lot is like, what do I listen to? What do I do while I'm doing these details? Because to be honest, there is a good bit of time. Like this one in particular was a total of 10 hours. For majority of the detail actually, when I could listen to it, I try to listen to different podcasts and different self-help kind of stuff or entrepreneur type or, uh, or entrepreneur type podcast to one pass the time, but also to help from a personal growth standpoint. I think it's something that everyone should definitely invest in. When you have free time, just try to listen to something that you're interested in and to help you accomplish your goals.
I don't know why I think this, but when I look at the design of the seat fabric, it makes me think of like Super Mario RPG from like Super Nintendo days. I don't know why, but honestly, all I think about is Super Mario RPG. Now that all the extraction part is done and all of those pieces are off sitting to dry, I'm going to be moving to the inside of the cabin to start cleaning off all of the panels and the dashboard just using my all-purpose cleaner, my detailing brushes, and a clean microfiber rag. And once those panels are clean, I'm just going to be using 303 Aerospace Protectant to coat the panels to help with giving them a nice clean finish, but also giving it some sort of UV protection. And when I was cleaning the dashboard and when I was reaching on the top between the glass and the dashboard panel, I found a few treasures, which, and honestly, you can never guess what you'll find in cars when you detail them sometimes. Now one area of your car that I would highly recommend you check into is looking on the different grip parts of your steering wheel, the underneath of it, all of those different areas that you honestly probably have a ton of caked on dirt. It's the most common spot that I find either makeup or dirt and grime collecting because your hands are always touching it on all those different spots. And typically it kind of will blend in if you're not looking at it close enough. So if you're gonna be detailing your car this weekend, definitely check to see how your steering wheel looks. Now for the windshield and the dash and the different mirror visors, I'm just using visible glass from Stoners. This is like my go-to glass cleaner that I always use. If you're looking for a tint safe glass cleaner, I have all of my products linked in the description box below. Now because this is a Jeep and I was able to remove the top and remove everything out of the car, it made my life so much easier when it came to cleaning the floors and everything inside the vehicle. So I know that's not somewhat relatable for most people, but for me, it turned out to be a saving grace for my back to have that extra room to move around. Like I mentioned earlier, I was planning on cleaning the floors as well, and I'm just using an all-purpose cleaner and my bristle brush to kind of scrub it before I wipe it off with my microfiber towel. Because the trunk part carpet was so deteriorated in the one corner and torn up, I actually spoke with the owner who said just negate the bottom piece and just put the fender carpet back on. And honestly, I think just having the painted floor bed turned out really nice when you guys see the end results. Now 
Now with the floors completely clean, I'm getting my twin to help me out with putting everything back into the vehicle, but getting the carpets back in is actually really easy in the Jeep. So if you have one and you need to get your carpets clean or just clean out your car in general, it honestly pops right out pretty easily. A lot of people ask how I know how to do these sort of things, and to be honest, I've been working on cars for a very long time. Typically things go together in some way, shape, or form similar to other manufacturers, but if you're ever trying to figure out how to remove something from your car or how to fix something, just pull up Google, type it in, and there's always a forum for every type of vehicle out there, and there's people talking about it, explaining how to do it. So definitely utilize that as a resource and helping you get your car clean. Now with everything back installed inside the vehicle, it is time to wheel this beast out of the garage to get the after shots for you guys because this thing looks amazing. The paint actually looks really, really nice in the sun with the ceramic spray. And without it being paint corrected and all the scratches removed, I was really pleased with how it turned out and so was the owner. Granted, this car is used for off-roading. It is meant to get dirty, so it's not gonna be perfect and it's not gonna be completely spotless. But for a detail to spray out all of that mud on the exterior and then in the interior, I think the car turned out amazing. Everything cleaned up perfectly and you probably wouldn't even realize that this car went through as much mud as it did. Now that you guys have seen the end results, I want you guys to comment below what was your favorite part of this detailing transformation, whether it was the interior, exterior, or the seats, or the carpets, or the paint. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite part of this detail. And if you guys are new, hit the subscribe down below. Join the Stoffer Garage crew because I have new videos come out every Saturday morning for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. See you guys in the next one.